Welcome back. Well, there's a lot happening in the United States. Impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump continues to make headlines. Let's find out the state of play uh, with the president there for perspective. Ambassador Charles Stith joins me now live in studio. He was the former U.S. ambassador to Tanzania and also the chairman uh, of the African Presidential Leadership Center. Ambassador, pleasure having you on the program. Thank you very much. Always indeed. good to be here. Thank you. Let's start off with impeachment, and I just want to give our viewers some context with regards to this. It all started off with regards to the July 25th phone call that uh, President Donald Trump had with his Ukrainian counterpart, um, and basically talking about matters relating to Joe Biden, who is a, a potential 2020 uh, presidential candidate, a rival for him, and his son Hunter. When you look at that conversation, and from what you've heard, is it enough for, for, for articles of impeachment and removal? Well, see, I'd frame that slightly different. Mm -hmm. the, the July 25th uh, phone conversation uh, with the Ukrainian president was just simply uh, an, another benchmark mm -hmm. uh, in this process of, of impeachment. It actually started during the uh, uh, presidential campaign in 2016 when the intelligence services uh, uh, came out and made a public statement mm -hmm. that there was some definite contact between uh, the Russian government and the Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, it, at that point, I, I knew we were on a slippery slope should this guy get mm -hmm. elected relative to his ability to stay in the office. And then, of course, soon after he was in office, we had the, the number of indictments of his former campaign chairman yep. Paul Manafort, yep. uh, Mike Flynn, uh, whom he put in the position of national security advisor. Yep. And, you know, the documented interaction between his campaign, his administration, and the Russians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his obstruction of justice yep. to find out what was behind all of those contacts. But it seems that the, the Democrats are now pinning their hopes on this conversation in order to affect this, this impeachment inquiry. Uh, the likes of Nancy Pelosi, for instance, you've heard what she had to say in this regard. But I guess the pushback you would get from certain circles is that, is this enough? Does this cross the line? Uh, when, when, when the founding fathers envisaged this, this article of impeachment, uh, would they have said, okay, this is it. This is flagrant wrongfulness. Do you think that uh, takes it past that point? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because quite frankly, Donald Trump comes close to uh, uh, engaging in an impeachable offense every day. Uh, and that's not hyperbole. Uh, you know, he, he, was, uh, he just made the decision uh, to uh, not hold the G7 uh, summit mm. at his uh, resort in, in Florida, Florida yeah. which would have been a violation of the emoluments clause. Mm. I mean, and his perspective is, I guess, if I do this uh, out in the open uh, mm. without shame, or remorse, then there shouldn't be any consequences, and that's just not the way our Constitution mm -hmm. is written. There is an emolument, emoluments clause mm -hmm. that the President of the United States should not use his office to personally enrich himself. Mm -hmm. There is a clause in the Constitution that uh, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, precludes us engaging foreign powers in mm -hmm. the U.S. democratic process. Yeah. Uh, and he's violated those with uh, out shame or embarrassment. I guess the, the words do us a favor is causing this huge consternation at this time. And I guess the, the, the mantra from certain uh, circles who his supporters will, will say there's no quid pro quo. You don't agree that this conversation or the quid pro quo argument, which is basically you scratch my back, I scratch yours, sure. uh, in, in layman's terms, uh, wasn't for the benefit of the United States. It was for him personally. No, it was clearly for uh, the benefit of Donald Trump and his campaign. Mm. And actually, uh, his chief of staff, uh, Mike Mulvaney, uh, in another one of the multiple very bizarre moments of the Trump presidency uh, from a lectern in the White House said that there was, in fact, a quid pro quo, that mm -hmm. there was an expectation that the Ukrainian government would open an investigation 
uh, to help consolidate this smear campaign against uh, Joe Biden. And when they did that, then there would be deliverables from the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, talk to us a bit about that. I mean, Joe Biden has come out and said their hands are clean in terms of that. Uh, what's the latest with, with regards to Hunter Biden? Has he left that, uh, that company? Uh, he, yes, the yeah. is a short answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not just Joe Biden. Yeah. It's every entity that in some way, shape, form, or fashion was involved in affecting U.S. foreign policy during the Biden administration mm. have all come out mm. and said that there were no breaches of protocol or law on the mm. part of Joe Biden in his interaction with the Ukrainian government and their insistence that they clean up corruption. Mm. He was simply carrying forward uh, the mandate uh, that was the, the, the um, Obama administration yep. policy as mm. well as the, the, the EU. Mm -hmm. The irony is that if the government of Ukraine had moved on the recommendations that he pro-offered, mm -hmm. they would have impacted adversely on the company yeah. on which Hunter Biden served. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly no conflict of interest there. Then enter Rudy Giuliani. CNN is reporting that the president's uh, personal lawyer pushed the State Department and the White House to get a visa for ousted Ukrainian prosecutor uh, who promised dirt on the Bidens. Are you shocked that Rudy Giuliani is in this mix? I mean, we know how he was a savvy prosecutor. He has a storied reputation of fighting crime. And now in the mix. You know... If you had asked me if I could have seen Giuliani doing something like this prior to 2016, uh, my response to you would have been, come on, mm, you've got to mm, be kidding. Yeah. Uh, it has been uh, uh, startling, uh, remarkable, mind-boggling. Uh, and you could probably come up with a sundry of other adjectives in yeah, that realm yeah, yeah. Uh, to describe his behavior and interaction since Donald Trump got elected. Mm. Uh, I mean, clearly, as has been uh, demonstrated in this investigation, yeah. he had an economic motive. I mean, clearly he was making money. But does uh, he? Uh, because the argument would be is he doesn't re really need the money, isn't it? What is the other motive? Well, uh you know, really doesn't need the money. I mean, at the end of the day, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, what we do know is that he made some money. I mean, the two people that were arrested the other day who had a company uh, ironically called Fraud Inc., mm -hmm. uh, he was paid $500,000 to try to assist them with visas and other yeah. sorts of uh, other things. Um, you know, it's it's uh, this this is going to be one of those fascinating moments in history yeah. that historians and uh, social si political scientists write about, talk about, mm. and think about for years. So you see Giuliani's actions as problematic, irrespective of potential criminal exposure. Well, they're problematic, and you know you can't underestimate or understate this matter of criminal exposure. Yeah. Uh, and I would think that uh, as we get closer to an indictment of Giuliani, uh, it'll be an interesting twist in soap opera terms yeah. uh, to see where Giuliani mm -hmm. uh, uh, goes relative to his defense of Donald Trump. You know, United States history will say that the president's men are uh, always uh, exposed. Uh, when you look at Watergate, you had Nixon being pardoned. But the president's men went to jail. Do you see that following the same trend this time around? You know, it, 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 look, could it happen? The short answer is yes. Would it be the neatest way uh, to wrap this up from the perspective of the U.S. Uh, government? Uh, of course. Would it mitigate further harm and division in the nation? Yes. Uh, whether it will happen... Uh, I'm not sure, and mm. precisely because of the multiplicity mm. of violations mm. of the Constitution on the part of Donald Trump. 
So those sitting back home watching in South Africa and around the continent are saying, Blaine, an ambassador, why should I care? How is this going to affect me? Talk to us about uh, a, a post-Trump presidency for Africa. What does it mean? Well, I think a number of things will happen. Uh, one, uh, many of our ambassadorial posts on the continent have not been filled. Yeah. I, as I understand it, there will be uh, an ambassador posted to South Africa mm -hmm. within the next month or so. Uh, and under most circumstances, you'd say that's a good thing. Yeah. Under this presidency, one only wonders. Mm -hmm. uh, given the way foreign policy uh, has been uh, conducted. Mm -hmm. uh, once things start to become normalized again, yeah. uh, I think we'll see uh, the U.S. re-engage in Africa. Yeah. Uh, and certainly it won't be from the perspective of, that Trump articulated uh, yeah. infamously some time ago as a continent full of blank hole nations. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of potential in, uh, on this continent, and uh, you know the Chinese mm -hmm. are, are moving aggressively in the mining sector. You've got the Australians and right. uh, the Canadians. The uh, Japanese are getting involved in infrastructure and, yeah. and agriculture. Uh, so I would look for uh, our country, the United States, becoming much more engaged in a proactive way yeah. on the continent, and that's a good thing for Africa yeah. and a good thing for America. Look, I want to get uh, your, your take with regards to the Democratic uh, presidential race as well and some of the candidates that might stand out for you that will have a vested interest uh, in Africa as well. Uh, you have, what, about 100 candidates now? Is no, that it, 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 it feels like it. So the last time I saw the last presidential uh, debate was about 12. You have yes. the top contenders as yeah. Biden, uh, Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Warren as well. But when you look at... The ages of these candidates. I mean, Bernie Sanders will be, what, 78? And he just yeah. recently had a heart attack. Yes. You yes. have um, Biden, if elected in his first term, he'll be 80. Elizabeth Warren, I think, will be the oldest president ever elected um, at, at the age of 71. Is that a major concern for you? Well, the, the short answer is that the electorate clearly has made a judgment that it's not. I mean, notwithstanding... Uh, the uh, the uh, cliche that uh, seven, uh, f uh, 70 is the new 50. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 70 is 70. Uh, but the, the voters uh, have seen uh, indicated that uh, that age doesn't matter. And quite frankly, I think the, the more critical issue is what vision do you bring yeah. uh, to bear? You know, are you the kind of personality that can start to heal some of the divisions that Donald Trump has uh, exploited. Yeah. And do you have a, a vision that will uh, reposition America uh, internationally yeah. and reposition Americans within the context of our economy domestically? Yeah. Ambassador, there's so much that we need to talk to. We're probably going to have you back as well uh, to talk about your center and the work that your center is doing. Just very briefly, just give us the importance. Uh, we, I know my director is going to jump at me, <laughs> but just very briefly about your center and the importance. Well, we, we try to, the African Presidential Leadership yeah. Center focuses on issues that yeah. are, are relevant to Africa. It deals with questions that yeah. Africans need to raise. And fortunately, we've got partners like the National Lottery here in right. South Africa and uh, a private property that have engaged with us to look at things like how the private sector participates yeah. in African development. All right. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed thank for your you. time. Appreciate it. All right. So that was Ambassador Charles Stith, former U.S. Ambassador to Tanzania and also uh, part of the, well, the chairman of the African Presidential Leadership Center. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Romy has all your sporting details. Next.